experience. We thank you. We give you praise and we give you glory. We honor and adore you. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for strength. We thank you for your healing virtue. That we flow out here tonight. We thank you for the gift of babies. We thank you. We thank you for reversals that will take place tonight. We thank you.
you help me if you don't mind if you're sitting at the back come and help me fill up these spaces where's your wife she's going to work okay Wish you were here. Wish you was here. Come and help me fill up these spaces, including. Thank you. You were the one I met with last night. I was asking where you from. You right? There was a reason why I asked you that question yesterday. Oh, Mahambraha Hasif in a hatwa. You are keeping space for people. Who want to sit on my seat? Come and sit. That's this. We we'll still get two space here. They were defiling well. I like the mosque. I don't love the mosque. I like the mosque. There's somebody there. Byron and Jota. Move it when the person comes, get another space. There are two spaces here, too. Where is your husband? Okay, he's sitting with the workers. Are you very active there as a worker? Come and sit with your wife. Is he? Canva? Is one switching it? Okay. at us and I know that there is order. Jeremiah chapter 1. Okay, uh, before we start, yesterday was Pastor Mike's wedding anniversary. The way, the way I came in into the meeting, I was just caught up in between the, the heavens and the earth. Pastor, I was stirred up the environment and there was no time to do all the protocols. Um, Chidiman, Pastor Mike, can you just stand up and come forward? Where's Chidiman? Okay, uh, what, what, at what point did she escape from here? Okay, so sit down when she comes. Let them call her for me. Yeah. Pastor Mike and um, Chidiman celebrated how many years yesterday? Huh? When they talk, when they talk the years, why? Eh? You know, matter. No. That's not a challenge. It's not a challenge. Never a challenge. Never consider it. And I think you have to.
So thank God for this step that I took. He's making me know something. And I'm, after the meeting, please, both of you should see me. celebrate them. Stand up. I will not see how, how old their marriage is today. I will come back and tell you my reason to next time when I do. When I've overseen what I need to oversee. to stretch forth your hands. Come forward. This, my guys have labored in this house and I want you to stretch forth your hands and pour out a blessing to them. That he who waters shall be watered and the liberal soul shall be made fat that indeed the Lord will renew and rekindle the love in this home That by his grace, they will leap over the walls. By his wisdom, they will bring in establishment. That in this season, the Holy Spirit will open them up to dimensions of his grace and favor. Strength from above. Renewals of all kinds will take place even from today. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, pour out your spirit until their wilderness becomes a fruitful field and their fulfilled feet be accounted for a forest. Strengthen them Keep them, O oh God, together even unto old age. And may the wine of this relationship never go out. May the wine be fresh always in the name of Jesus. We cover them by the blood of Jesus. And we ask for the oil of preservation in Jesus' name. Happy anniversary to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So, Jeremiah chapter 1. I was supposed to do that yesterday. I forgot. Thank God I remembered now. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 4. Then the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, in the belly I knew thee and before thou camest forth out of the womb I sanctified thee and I ordained thee and I ordained thee a prophet unto nations so this is like God telling us that um, your life on earth is just like coming to act out what has been written concerning you all right, it's a rehearsal of what the Lord has preordained, predetermined, predestined. How many of you are familiar with those words? Where are those words captured? If 
Romans then Ephesians chapter 1 okay so you see that what Paul was talking about there has been captured even in the Old Testament that there was a young man whom the Lord was calling and when the Lord called him he said before I formed thee in the belly I knew thee ah it means that uh, it's not boki boki that gives birth to a son we have children here okay so it's not okay i think they are not here okay. it's not just sexual intercourse that gives that makes a child if it's sexual intercourse that makes a child everybody will be a father some will tell you that ah yeah they, they, there is even the people that do sex selection they meticulously follow it and sometimes it fails I read yesterday or the day before yesterday a woman that is 70 that gave birth to twins. How many of you saw that at 70 she gave birth to twins? And I'm like, okay, what happened? Somebody say God happened. <laughs> and then there are some research that come that's happening now that they say they just boost. They boost. There's one particular stuff that they say they boost, whatever it is anyway. It's hormone, but there's something that they boost. All right and then it the research is ongoing the only thing i know is that science will not come to the place where they can create life there's always that exemption that will always let us know that god is supernatural so before i formed in the belly i knew thee and before thou camest forth out of the womb i sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet that word ordination there talks about why you were coming in the first place um, that's that that's that's the the foundation for which i want to start today on healthy encounters and i want us to begin to itemize a few things from the other scriptures so god is saying to you that uh, he formed you for a reason he formed you for a purpose and this is where every believer needs to understand that he or she does not decide his destiny you don't just wake up and say this is what i want to become yes before now you you did that i mean i studied economics and education uh, because you know most of us that went to university in nigeria only two percent can tell us that they studied what they really wanted to study and only maybe 15 to 20 percent will tell us that they are working with their certificate I saw a lawyer that finished studying, gave his father his certificate and said, this was what you wanted, here, it, here is it, take. I'm going back to study accounting. Dr. Ike, our pastor in Abuja, after becoming a medical doctor, he went back to study accounting. So, as, 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 as we journey as a prophetic people, remember this is a tutorial class. So if it's a tutorial class, I will speak to us as though I'm speaking to students. So the reason I'm holding my stylus pen is so I can remind myself that I'm lecturing. Okay? Now this lecture is full of power. Right? Um, so, before I formed in the belly, I, I, I knew the, there is a knowing. Somebody say knowing. Before the Lord released you, he, he, he knew about it. He knew that you were going to come. He knew that he was going to release you upon the face of the earth to do some certain things for him. And some of us have been on our own. We've dished out on our own lane. We've run on our own strength. Dissipated energy on wrong lanes. Maybe dissipated for about um, 15 years before you, you got yourself. Maybe you are a potacot boy. You know the people they call Potakot boys? How many of you are familiar with that phrase? Potak. I'm a Potakot boy. Yo. That, that phrase, I'm a Potakot boy, is pregnant. Alright? Me, I'm, I'm an island boy. So when you hear people when they live in Lagos and they say, Hey, I'm a I'm a island boy. They are just trying to tell you that they are, they are the happening people. It doesn't happen on the mainland. And it's good that it doesn't happen on the mainland. Thank God it's happening on the island. That thing that they are saying, thank God is here that it happens. 
Are you with me? So, you, you don't get to decide your future. You get to discover your future. As you walk with God, you come into discoveries of who you are in God. I, I mean, when I gave my life to Christ and I began to walk with the Lord, I actually just felt that I'm a preacher because I knew that I can stand and talk. I, I didn't know I could teach. But as I went, as time went on with, in my walk with God, in my sojourn with God, I began to see that, hey, okay, there is a modicum of this little layer of breaking scripture. A little. Right? Now, that was not a decision I took that I must know how to teach the Bible. It was a discovery. I needed to stumble on it. And the second thing I stumbled on, which was, which amazes me till today, is the fact that I have pastoral grace. I never knew I had pastoral grace. I never knew I can be patient with people. That I can sit down with you and say, uh -huh. so, now, all right. And I will be patient to listen to you for two hours, sometimes four hours. You are the only one I'm concentrating on as though I'm jobless. It was right there in you and I didn't know. So, in healthy encounters, you must first, first, discover who you are in God. First. First. And in discovering who you are in God, he said, before I formed thee. So, Pastor Mike, go back. No distract me. Uh -huh. I will call you out, even though you are your pastor. No, I'm just telling you because your eye is trying to bend a little. You know I'm an expert in this matter too. So you see, if I call this because that will finish me, it will distract me. To distract me. So, he said, before I formed thee, forming is a process. You will have to go through a lot of so the butterfly goes through what can you tell me the stages egg what uh-huh uh-huh huh adomen <laughs> let's take it again want to go uh-huh 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 all right all of those things are, this, are processes, are stages. Right? You go through those formative stages. I remember when I was growing up as a teenager. Sport teenager, for that matter. I wanted beards. So I went to buy spirit. When I, when I, when I wake up in the morning, I quickly, before my mom will catch me, I will rub it, rub it. What I was looking for was captured in time and that time will come that I'm tired of it I don't want to see it and I want to shave I was looking at my tomorrow now when tomorrow has been captured tomorrow is definitive God has predestined it that I don't need spirit to have beards how many of you did that And when you are doing it, now beards are out, you are tired. Well, these days we are not tired because it's the days of keeping the beards. Yeah, they call it bearded gang. All right. So I'm just trying to tell you process. Once upon a time, I was a single. I got married. I was taking care of my wife. Then process went on. Things happened. God gave us a son. Things happen again. God gave us a daughter. Things happen again. God gave us a daughter, a son. And then, when the children now came, suddenly we now realize that oh, we need to pay school fees. We now, do you understand? As you are evolving, there are formative years in your life. There are formative seasons in your life. But within these processes, the reason why you go through those processes is for God to mature you. 
So there is a formation process and there is a feeling process. So the Bible says God created man in his spirit, in his image, and afterward his likeness. But the man that he created was a, was a disembodied being. And in order for that disembodied being to find expression upon the face of the earth, he had to form what? Ah. There is a creation and there is a formation. The first one was man was framed in the spirit. But for him to have a term of reference, no, created, created from the spirit, now I talk, is what I said. Then formation was from the dust of the earth. And the reason why he's going to be formed is because he is going to be living here. So he's a three dimensional being. He's going to find his expression here upon the face of the earth. So there is a contact that is needed for that spirit to be warehoused properly. And so God decided to form his frame from the earth. You see, when God was creating man, he said, let the spirit of man be. Just the way he created the heavens and the earth. It was by declaration. By, by decrees. When he came to the... For the formation of man, he was not created. He was formed. God had to go through the process of molding. Are you with me? God had to go through the process of what? Molding. In other words, God... I think I've done that here before. When God was going to release man upon the face of the earth, he molded him. When he molded that man, he breathed into man, a man became what? A living soul. Now, um, it was Noah I used now. When I used Noah that day, I said to us in that meeting that the first encounter of man was not his environment. The first encounter of man was not his purpose. The first encounter of the embodied man, the embodied man was God. When he breathed into man, close your eyes. Imagine I want to breathe into you. So this is God. Austin God. Adam. My Adam. So, when I breathe into him now, he's going to open his eyes and I will ask him a question. When I breathe into this mic, you open your eyes. Adam, what did you see? Who is you? I said, Austin God. You just say, Austin God. So when he saw me, you know what I now did? The Bible said, I now, Austin God now took him to the east side of the garden and I presented him with Eden. The garden is big, but Eden was a fraction of that garden. Are you with me? Did you get that? Eden was a fraction. It was the east coast. Or east side. So this entire room. And then God now says, this is Eden. From this side to this side. You remember the Bible said that when, what was his name? Abel Cain. Um, when Cain left, what did the Bible say? He departed from the presence of God. He left that ecosystem where God was. And when he left the ecosystem of Jehovah, he built cities. Meaning that we, our, our, the purpose for our sojourning with Christ is not necessarily to make money. It's to know him. Because I don't need Jehovah to prosper. That's one. Two. How many of you know that when God called Adam, when God called Abraham, Abraham was rich when God called him. He was rich in cattle, he was rich in silver and gold, made and uh, male and female servant, handmaidens. So he was rich. When Jesus called him, when God encountered him, he was good. And the way he made his money was from idols. So that was why when God was going to call him, God made an appearance. Acts chapter 7 told us. Are you with me? So, 
I, I'm just talking about the formation that when it comes to formation, God pays attention to the details. They mold your head. And then when God was done, he now held you by the hand and presented you to the garden. It, it, it's, so, it's so interesting to know that you were not created to be stranded. You were not created to be stranded. You were created with a purpose at the back of God's mind. You were created with an idea in God's mind. You were created with a motive in God. And that motive is that your life will bring pleasure to him. Bring and give pleasure to him. That every time God looks at you, he will be glad. He will be happy that these are my twin daughters. And they are bringing glory to me. Who did Oho? These are my daughters to remove your idol. Amen. So, all of these things is to be able to bring this man up to speed. That look, you are a teenager, but you cannot live for yourself again. I created you so that you can live for me. And he's about to begin a prophetic journey. And in if this prophetic journey will mean anything, then God will have to steward it using his life. God will have to paint that picture. God will have to paint that color before him in order to adventure into what God wants him to adventure. But first, I need you to discover who you are. That you are not just a product of your mom and, and dad. You are not a byproduct of their effort. Even though it takes hmm, even though it takes the natural plus the divine to bet the supernatural. Did you hear what I said? It takes what? The natural plus the divine to give birth to, to the supernatural. There must be cooperation between the spirit realm and the earth realm in order to birth the will of God. There must be cooperation between the spirit realm and the earth realm in order to birth the negative supernatural. Are you with me? There must be cooperation between the spirit realm and the earth realm in order to birth the divine supernatural. So there is the negative supernatural and there is the divine what? Supernatural there must be an interference between heaven and earth before we see something supernatural. There must be interference. So God will have to come here and speak to this guy and then the ordination begins to find expression when there is what? Sanctification. What is sanctification? When you are called out. When you are separated. So there are times I call my children and I say, you see, for now, because I can't tell the future. I say for now, the way I see this young man behave, he is not behaving as somebody that is going where you are going to. So for now, watch the way you relate with them. The focus is not the same. The agenda is not the same. The plan is not the same. We may all be together, but what I'm seeing, the plan is not the same. So for now, son, watch it. If you help me, say amen. So, God gave this promise and he said I sanctified and ordained thee a prophet unto what? Not unto a nation but unto what? The nations. So it means that as you begin to operate as a child of God who is prophetic there are boundaries of operation. Some of us God will give us one as we are faithful he moves us to two as we are faithful he moves us to three and some of us, God, we start us with five. The parable of the talent. Are you with me? The parable of the talent. One say, I know you are a wicked man. And because you are a wicked, that's why I didn't trade. I just went and I dug the ground and I hid your talent. Now that you are back, take your talent. The talent, the word talent there means gifts. Charisma. The ability that you've given to me to trade. I refuse to trade with it. I hid it.
when you study that particular scripture you will have to always pray asking god to help you the lord i pray that the day you want to make withdrawal from my life may i not be found wanting because there will always be the day for withdrawal and there are two things that happen in the days of withdrawal it is either you bring glory to god or you bring glory to yourself there are many of us have you have you seen have you seen mighty revivalists that it is the point at which god wants to make withdrawal there's one scandal will bust out when god says okay we're bringing this guy to a place where he can call up the entire lagos and when he speaks the governor will listen and then carnality takes over the day god says take my talent let me travel to a yonder place and see other things and come back because that was what the parable was about he gave them and he left and they thought he won't come back or at least the other guy was thinking that if he come back safe he's a wicked man i'll just give him his talent so there will be boundaries of operation that will be mapped out to us but as we become faithful god will open us up in my sojourn in the prophetic i i, I see i have seen i've seen people to whom god gave a building with 10 people as they were faithful for five years boom he moved them to a bigger place as they were faithful boom he moved them to african nations as they were faithful boom a apostle Arame was teaching campuses for 13 years and when he was training on campuses for 13 years went to the entire country of nigeria people thought that ah, this thing you are doing there is no future in it oh. your own is different you just you are just traveling into campuses i remember one of my pastor called me and, I, and said so this apostle Arame that you want to follow now is it campus ministry you want to do i said yes it's campus ministry that's what god said we should do our calling is to the youth and we are not ashamed of being called to the youth because if you even know when you when you when you come to a church and there are no young people weep for the church it means that church does not have posterity it means there's no posterity all the old men will die and the work will die i went to a church and i sat down and i saw the ministers coming everybody was old 60 50 you barely could see a 40 year old as a pastor there ah, don't even talk to 20 40 was even difficult you you, you are pep talking there but you know the church huh? i said what is this first row gray hair everywhere that's fine we are blessed because it means that there's longevity here second row gray hair third row semi gray hair fourth row semi semi great hair i mean you can handpick the pastors that are 40. you couldn't pick it was difficult to pick a pastor that was 28 29 30. and i'm like okay i had to speak to my oh god i had to speak to somebody i say what's going on sir you need to ordain young ministers oh because if not this this work the way i'm looking at it in the next 10 years this place will be gone there are no new blood that will inject some fire into this work where are the sanctified young people you know what's going on the sanctified young people as soon as they come up they move to places like this star they move to places like um, new wine anointing the new and when they move they become the leaders of departments in those churches they will go there and they will they will most of you cannot count 10 heads of music directors in this league course you can't count 10 without tracing five to this church i'm talking about you will somehow you will find their roots there it's just impossible i i mean it's 
It's impossible. So what's going on? The separation is having a challenge. So when God begins to talk about sanctification in your quest for fulfillment is because there is something in the mind of God that you need to peep into. For example, you will come to a place where once you understand your calling, there is not everywhere you can go to. And it's not everybody you can listen to. That's not because you are proud. And that's not because you don't love the unity of the body. Because you hear young people talk things like, ah, oh, for the unity of the body, for the unity of the body. That is good. Unity is not uniformity. It's not uniformity. Whatever becomes uniformity, when the emphasis becomes uniformity, it means cloning. For example, if you see me today and I come and I do double, I don't know, double punk or what do you call it? Hair front, head back. The moment I do like this, you will know that this is Apostle Rome. I don't cut my hair like that. Right? That, that, they say yeah, to show that we are united together as RCM members and we need to wear the kind of clothes Papa wear and we need to wear the kind of shoes. That's cloning. It's okay if you want to. It's okay if he decides to dress like I dress, you know. So if he decides to dress like me, I mean, that's I'm talking of Pastor Mike. If he decides to say he wants to dress like me, now, look at it today that he's on suit. I'm on native. Nothing spoil. You know, I say okay because we want to be united. We want to show that we are men of unity, and we need to dress the way. That's that's not that's not what the body is for. You look at the activators. You look at the you look at the, the the specification of your life, and you align to it. Did somebody get what I'm saying tonight. All right. So he said, "Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee to be a prophet unto the nations." In other words, your life on earth is a story that God is telling. It's an immortal story. Now that's a quotation from my spiritual father. Your life on earth is an immortal story that God is telling. Your life is, a, is unveiling something that is in the mind of God. And peradventure, as you begin to unveil that matter, then the enemy comes in and brings distraction. The Bible says that all things work together for good. Because you will, God will encounter you again and bring you back and repair the damage and then sanctify, consecrate you and push you back somebody with me hmm. the title of this message is healthy encounters in the spirit healthy encounters in the spirit so before I formed there I knew it in the belly so there is a formation there is a knowing there is a separation and there is ordination are you with me there is what? Formation. There is knowing. There is sanctification. And there is what? Ordination. And there is inheritance. Please write this down quickly. There is in our journey on to healthy encounters, there is formation. This is process. There is knowing God knowing that is divine there is what? sanctification that is called out separation there is what? ordination which is purpose there is inheritance which is boundaries of operation the boundaries of operation, the places, the nations that God has willed to you. As I speak now, there are nations that Jesus has willed to me. Nations that will touch upon the face of the earth. And do you know what he said to me? He said, son, the world is your parish. He said that to me 2008. 
So that is why I know that my feet will touch all the continents of the earth. Preaching the gospel. Not to go there and do these things that you people do. Selfie and say me in Travaga Square. No. It, my own is to say that I'm preaching the gospel and I'm asking God for souls. By the way, you can go on vacation. Uh, for example, this December, by all means, if you can afford it, after you've given people food, travel. So let me bring balance. This morning I spoke as though I was against traveling. No. But after you have done the needful, then you can travel. <laughs> let me tell you one story before I move to my next point. I rear cows, you know. So I have about 10. 10 of them, very big. At some point, they say four died. I say, okay, no problem. It's all right. Remaining how many? Six. Okay. So inside, in my head, I've calculated that, okay, I'll give my pastors, I'll keep one for them and share for all of them. <laughs> Yesterday, I now call where my cows were. They said, the gate open and cows are missing. <laughs> this, this thing is about 800K times 10. That's how much? Eh? Uh -huh. that, that's what we are talking about oh. so they said one is remaining so I said if one is remaining sure we give it to the pastors now I'll be, I will sell it and recoup 800k you see my carnal mind is telling me sell it and get at least 800,000 but I had already said I will give my pastors what? one so I'm caught in, I need to tell them to rush now and go and bring that, that one before they will say that one stro strode out again <laughs> But while I was, while the guy was telling me, something rose inside of me, and I know this is a lie. Uh, Bobo ate it, I won't in here. Because this is the season to say, yeah, what it does. Eh? How, 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 cow, cow will stroll out, he just go, you know, come back. <laughs> what was I saying before I moved to this story? What were we saying? Inheritance. Inheritance. Boundaries. Then the man, one guy came to church and they said they want to contribute. They are going to meet the needs of people. Uh, people that are coming, they need to feed them. One guy did like this. He said, I have cows, I'll give one. So when he said he will give one, the next day they called him and they said, one of your cows died though. He called the pastor. He said, Pastor, God's cow died last night. Did he get that? He already said he will give God one cow. So, and he had two. One died overnight. So he called the pastor. He said, Pastor, sir. He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, I just want to let you know that God's cow died last night. His own didn't die, but God's own died. Okay, so you're awake now. That's what we call skill in teaching. You're back. Yeah? So, in, in that ordination thing, you will see that as God is ordaining you, God never, never intends for you to be stranded. As he's ordaining you, everything you need to prosper, everything you need to succeed is within that ordination. For his own to succeed, God gave him nations. So the nations that God called him to will bankroll his assignment. You know how I came to Lagos? How many of you came to Lagos with money? Your father was sending you to Lagos. You had all the money. You had everything checked out. Accommodation checked. House. Okay. Um, job. Checked. Marriage. Checked. You had everything planned out before you came to Lagos. Let me see your hand. You see? Almost no one. But you just came by faith. You were born here. If you were born here, let me see your hand. You all were born here and you are staying here. Is it God that is asking you to stay here? Or just the fact that you are used to Lagos? Oh, plenty. You don't see hands. Hey, plenty. You guys are plenty. Me, I was born in Sokoto. Sokoto State. Where Christianity is Christianity. Where they taught us not to be afraid of death. You know, it was when I came to Lagos, I saw people fasting and drinking water. I said, uh-uh. Bro, we are fasting. He said, I don't want my mouth to smell. No, 
You, you. Maybe it's because of Pastor Paul that raised you. Okay, first we you know that they drink water. My father in law, they drink water. Forget that thing. I say, my father. Hey, shark water. So my even shaking coffee. I say, you are fasting. He war. When I came to Lagos and say, when you are fasting, chew gum. Excuse me, gum, get sugar. It has pleasure. You chew gum, say so your mouth will not smell. Me, what I do when I, I fast, I carry toothpaste and toothbrush. If I'm going far and I see that my breath is changing, I'll look for a place and buy water and brush. Put it inside pocket again, I move. You shark water, two bottles before two o'clock in the afternoon. I know. And you are not doing dry fasting that you are saying is three days. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, there is inheritance within your calling, within your purpose. Because you will see that, again, going back to the garden, you see, I'm tracking you back into the garden. I'm bringing you back to this place. When you go to the garden, when God was presenting him to the garden, everything he needed was what? In the garden. So, you were never created to be stranded. The reason why you are stranded is because you have not located your purpose. If you locate your purpose and you are going through problems, you will go through it gracefully. So the first thing about healthy encounters in Christ is to discover who you are. All of this point is to bring you to the place of knowing who you are. You know, some of you are bankers. But you need to check by the Lord. Am I really called to be a banker? I'm, I'm not asking you to go and resign because I don't have money to give you. I'm just saying you check with the Lord. As a banker, is there something else you want me to do? How many of you saw Femi George? How many of you saw Femi Akioye? You know Femi Akioye is a builder of cities. He's a developer. He develops cities. But inside of that developing of cities his main call is that thing you saw us doing to make the money and <laughs> you know that day when he was dancing I said this guy is dancing area boy dance here <laughs> I, I can't even do the steps <laughs> and he was singing do you understand this he 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 understands the purpose for the wealth There is no air around him. As in no air, no single air. But that man is blessed. I can't tell you to what extent. But he's 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 he's, he's favored by God. He's highly blessed. But when you come here now to you, he will tell you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You will almost think you can knock him. Until when you sit, you now say, Ah, is it this kind of man I've been relating with since that he's doing yes, sir, yes, sir to me? You know what? He has understood his what? Ordination. He understands his separation. He told me a story of how one time they wanted to do program and there was no money. And he pulled out his Rolex and sold it for a program. Are we now surprised that God is blessing him? Huh? 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 No. Because he understands that he's not going to be tied to material things. I'm talking about discovering ordination. After craftsman one. One of them called us and they gave us a land here. I've not taken you to the place because they are clearing and they want to perfect the papers. I hope you know that they've given us a land from Craftsman 1 for island work. And that land is worth 350 million. Just a few days ago, I was talking to somebody. I said, you know, I've seen, I, I, I'm seeing our pastor's house. The pastor's house will be cordoned off like this. 
and then we'll build the church this way so that the, the pastor will not stress himself for accommodation. And I'm trusting God that you guys will grow to when you will take care of your pastor's accommodation here on the mainland. I, by the way, I pay my accommodation till date. So don't think RC and Lagos is paying my accommodation. I pay for my accommodation. Is that okay? But I look forward to when all of you will take it as a body to say, Pastor, when I concentrate on God, how much is your allow? How much is your rent self? The way you are teaching the Bible, don't be praying, I've been thinking rent. Let that be solved. You are not saying amen. amen. But if I say God will bless you now, your amen will break this roof. When it becomes for you to be selfless, it's difficult to say amen. I know these things I say will come to pass because if you don't do it, there's somebody listening to me online that may call him and say, how much is your rent? And that's all. And boom! Those, boom! Things will happen on, on that guy's life. And he will tell you that it's because of this thing that you said that I obeyed. Are you with me? So after craftsmen, Uncle Femi was giving that story during the program, but this is us. He was talking about himself when he said, a man knows nobody in Abuja. How many of you remember that thing? He was talking about himself. They approved hectares of land. What? Billions! The government, he knew nobody. He just applied and submitted by faith. God told him, wake up, go to Abuja, do this. He did. God trusts him so much. He knows that if I give this one wealth, he will not go about buying private jet and flying to where I didn't send him. When you want to buy a car, you buy a car for ordination. Not for a fizzy. When you want to build a house, you build for ordination, not for a fizzy. As in, everything around your life is guided by purpose. That's what I'm saying. If you want to live healthy, every, I have some in-laws, okay? My children. I watch some of my in-laws. Well, it's a large family, so if I say in-laws, anybody that knows is the one I'm talking to, peace to you. But it's large or large family. I, I looked at the way we lived, all of us. And then I noticed that when we go out, they look at the shoes children wear. Say, ah, this one is not wearing a designer. Hmm. Okay, oh. My sons will come. Is what I have that they will wear. And then they will look them and size them up. And I know it's not healthy for my kids. I stopped the yearly party. I, I told my wife, these children are not going there again. And because they are not going, me, I'm not going. Say, so no, it's family. I said, this is not family. This is death. This is not purpose. You don't take, I don't bring my kids to a place and you make them feel less. No. That's not the ordination. I only go to places not, look, not where I'm tolerated. Because they say, don't go to where you are tolerated, go to where you are celebrated. That's a, that's a nonsense. You go to where you are sent. Where you are sent, they may celebrate you and they may not celebrate you. In fact, there are times that your celebration will be after you, you've gone. But the most important thing is you were at the place where you were you, at the place where God sent you because God's man doing God's own business at, in God's time, in God's way will never lack. God's man doing God's own thing in God's own way in God's time will never lack godly support. So, if God called you into a place, ordained you into a place, and there is this struggle, this tussle, this competition, this rivalry, sibling, rivalry, ungodly, jealousy, comparison, I pull back 
So I pulled my kids back and I told them, hey guys, this is not healthy for you guys and this is why I don't want you there. While we wait for our time, know also that your time is going to come where you will wear designers. Don't use it on other people. And as at this time that I was speaking, let me just, let me not be, let me just be honest with you. At this time that I was even talking, I don't buy my children's clothes here in Nigeria. So I had to deliberately take them out. Because it's not healthy. And I don't want my kids to get to that point where, okay, we need to be rich by all means. No. You understand, you understand that purpose, purpose sets your limits of operation. Purpose sets your values for life. Purpose sets your limits of, for operation. Purpose sets your core values. You remember? Well, there was a brother that sat there and he was talking about guiding, uh -huh. You know, so what is guiding that thing? What is what is creating that boundary in your spirit is your purpose setting up the boundaries for you. Okay, for, for, for example, I don't have problem when a woman wears pants. What is it? What's pant? Okay, trousers. Let me use the one that the UK is we on the United Kingdom guys will understand. Where you wear trousers is not a problem for me. But it's a problem if you wear some certain kind of trousers. And now we call you to order. The trousers that will show the contour of your buttocks at the back. I'll call you. Yesterday, one of our members put one picture on her WhatsApp status. Huh? Kaimo Soyodo. <laughs> I sent her a message straight. I said, sister, you, did, you are not wearing bra. Straight. And I said, this, this thing is not for public consumption the last time I checked. In fact, what you did now, you are just all lost in us, including me. I said, because it was obvious that your breast was dangling. So you now carry one, is it F-O-J-B, M-O-G-O? -O what did you call it? And then you plastered it there. And even when you plaster it, I could see part of the nipple this way. That is not the purpose for your breast. It's not for you to put it online, on status. And the stupid thing, you know why I had to speak? She, she claimed she was worshipping God. A worship song was going on and I said, oh, come on, pull that thing down. That one is not our member here. And there was one of our members, she went for a wedding. They so clothed for her. That one is my daughter. Ah! I went to the status, I saw it. I said, I say, before I count two, I, before I count two, I don't want to see that thing. Are you? See the way I'm talking. I imagine how I now spoke to her. Remove that thing. Kia, kia. I will never be a 21st century and forget my sanctification. Never! Forget to ordination. We are talking about living healthy. I came to a I came to church one day and I saw my pastor's trouser. Ah! Away. I went outside and said, Call him for me. When he came, I took I said, Look yourself. Go look mirror. Look at your trouser. This thing you call trouser, look at it. If a sister looks at you now, she will be in trouble. I beg sit at the back because your house is far. Can't sit with pastors today. When you understand your purpose, it creates boundaries. I'm talking spiritual health, healthy encounters. You know, this one now is encounter about yourself first. Are you with me? We are talking about yourself first. I was, I was told of a drama that happened at the stadium. One of our members that, that dressed somehow. <laughs> I said, why would I not call me? Why didn't you call me? Because some of you are sources. Some of you, eh? Some of you, you make men lost. 
and some of you you make women lost we want to do clean up first when we talk spiritual encounters I I, I what sanctify thee so I've, I've, I have what sanctified called you out separated you others can you can't that's what it means oh, to be separated I walk like God the Father, like God the Son. I get back, you know. And then when they are, when some of them are dancing, they are dancing like drunks. And you say you have backache. The Victoria Orenze that sang the song, that's not how she danced, like an area girl. That's not how she was dancing. I see all kinds of dance in the church today. Say so we are dancing the David dance. Excuse me. Did you see the kind of dance David danced? We were only told that he danced until he, he danced in the spirit the, the, by the way where are you getting your own dance from the dance that you are calling spirit dance now where did you get it from you got it from davido's club and the way you know somebody is dancing a spirit dance is that that person doesn't dance on a good day you are not with me let's talk things today and then all of a sudden, like Pastor Mike now, I can't remember in my life when I've seen him dance. So the day, the day I will see Pastor Mike, how many of you have seen Chief Don? The day I will see Pastor Mike dance, and he comes and pulls his suit, and he begins to jump. I know this one, this is not Pastor Mike. This is the Holy Ghost. That is what you call spirit dance. When the Holy Ghost powers it, not that you just come. You, you do that. I don't know how you people do those dancing. The dance that I saw on the video is what you are now bringing to church. The church has become worldly and the world has become churchy. We dress like them. We show our cleavages. When you show the cleavages, our room temperature, our body temperature is on fire. I say it doesn't matter. I say it's 21st century. That, that I, I, when I was in Canada, I told them, I said, God knows that in me. That's why I can't, I can't stay in Canada. Me, I can't stay in UK. You are walking and you are seeing nipples everywhere. You turn this way, it slaps you. You turn that way, it slaps you. You turn this way, it slaps you. Say, guy, what is this? Hell, the encounter. You, you don't need, see, you don't need an environment that triggers your lust. You don't need it. To, when, when we talk healthy encounters, you don't need an environment that triggers your lust. Meanwhile, I've not entered the deep issues. This one is, what I'm doing now is I'm clearing the ground. I'm clearing the ground about you. Sister, don't you know that a man is fine when you see one? Don't you know? Is it a crime to know? No, it's not. Oh, oh Lord, this guy is fine, Sha. God create man here. You are not lost him. You begin to lost when you now engage. Say, Kai, see, see, see the alignment of his nails. You are paying attention to the details. Now, God bless you that that day the guy dressed in a way that is funny. You know, even our brothers these days, the way they dress, <laughs> with their beards. Well built. They will wear some kind of trouser. You will be seeing the control. You will be seeing how round their, their, their lap is. And the sister is not looking at you. She's just looking at your laps, man. There was a day I dressed in church in Sokoto. I didn't know. You, you, you think I'm just talking, right? I didn't know. I was thinking I was powerfully that I was walk, wearing a waistcoat that day. And I wore one trouser that was good. That trouser accentuated my bum bum. So I turned like this and the lady looked at me and she said, I will get this guy. <laughs> was it her fault? No. No. It was where I was dressed. Tight trouser. It was since that time. 
since that time I stopped wearing any trouser that will accentuate any part of my body you feel good but others feel lost by the way you look we talk healthy encounters I say no this is 21st century church it's okay 21st century we were, I was teaching in church excellence hotel and I was preaching and teaching ah, there was a lady that sat down in the third row my goodness huh? I thought and thought I looked everything here the only thing covering her breast was the dress it was like this on it I look I said this one can't be an RCM member say. this must be coming for the first time the entire lines of her breast was showing like this I tried to bone up I preached I went this way I came back my eye went there I, I came this way my eye went there I wasn't lost in, but I was distracted I had to walk to the pastor's seat I spoke to Turayo and my wife I said please so there is a lady on the third row third fourth row look at what she's wearing call her out and give her something I'm distracted I told my wife and I told another pastor's wife I don't want issues I don't want to go back and be bluetoothed with something be thinking of a woman's breast after I finish preaching because that's the way you came to church healthy encounters let's be truthful you see I'm giving you old school gospel in a new generation language uh, and they called her out they didn't insult her if it's before I've grown too if it's before I say hey young lady <laughs> your chest in the name of Jesus <laughs> cover it <laughs> you know I would have injured her yes, sir. I will injure her we will lose her but we called her out and I told my wife please is it flannel rapper I'll be that what do you know they call that thing Vashmina, me, I call it flannel rapper for babies. <laughs> you are a baby, that's why you are. Oh, you, <laughs> including my wife. I tell her, why you know say this get short? Why you wear and come church? Why they put face to it? Why? This face to it you are putting is triggering something. You don't know how the mind works. I will prefer you wear short skirt than to wear long one and slit it here. When you slit it, my imagination will be waiting there on that. But when she's not slitted, you say, hey, ba, men, where, where are the men? Where are the brothers? Once he's shot, I look you at once. I say, see how your lap is down. No problem. It's okay if you want to. But when you slit the team, as he's doing, back come, back come, back come, back come. I'm saying, okay, okay now. Make the team, Kukuma, go up. Moku, see the pant. Healthy encounters. And these are the things that dissipate spiritual energy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You prayed up. You, 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 you go out. Say, hey, what kind of dress is this? Healthy encounters. You encounter people that are not healthy. And they bluetooth what they carry to you because you also you lack health. Your spirit is weak. So anything can dive and stick to you. Victoria, come. Don't be dressed with this. Don't be dressed with this. Is this not classy? Well covered. Come. Is this not classy? Bro, come. Is this not okay? Sister, come. She's a married woman. Look at look at this cloth now. Come now. Is it not classy? There is something all of you do, believers, women, 
Today, what is going on now is when you wear clothes, it's longo. You are wearing a long t-shirt. You know, I'm I'm you know I was in the world, so I'm very observant. You put it this way because what sells in my generation was breast. What sells in this generation is bomb bomb. That's why you do easy liposuction, they call it or whatever. You make this place slim so that here is enhanced. So you wear your things like this. Here is like this. That is where you know that the spirit of the world has entered you. That you are, no, you are not healthy. Because you are now copying what they do. You wear a long t-shirt, but you will pull this place up. And the way the shenanigan you do is this. You will now say you are not pulling it off. You put phone here. So everything will land this way. What you do? Take him, take him, take him, take him, take him, take him, take him. Your your bum bum is flowing like football. I know Pastor Mike didn't see this coming when I said healthy encounter. I know, I know none of you saw it coming. What you saw coming is hey, in the prophetic. Let me clean you first before I take you there. Look at them dressing now. Don't you like this dress? I remember one day I went, my wife, birthday celebration, I went to the room. I said, ah, where is my wife here? She was, she, I was looking at her. She says, I say, it's not you. <laughs> no. Go back to that person. This is not makeup. This is makeover. Go back. Who's the one of this phone? I said, this is complete makeover. You are not, you are not EB. <laughs> it's not you. It's not. Hey, madam, make up. Take this, this, the foundations and the foundations and the foundations. Take everything out. Give me back my wife. <laughs> ah, I saw eyelashes. I see my wife is doing like this. <laughs> I said, hey. What is this? <laughs> Babe, did you see this thing in the mirror? Come on, trim it down. Before I go out to try, you are looking like a lady wearing the attires of an harlot. You don't know what we wear, most of us? Attires of an harlot. You don't feel bad. You say, I wear it to feel good. When you stop feeling good, why our brothers are lost in and our sisters are lost in? That's not Christianity. And that's not what the blood of Jesus died for. I know, I know. There is a lady in, in Uyo. I don't know. Is if is if is Uyo or Kalaba? She says she's a, a prophetess, and she her dressing is sensual, very sensual, erotic discussions. And I'm like, who gave birth to this one in the kingdom? Who is your father? And you are you are married. You are not doing this for the kingdom. You are doing this for yourself. When we talk healthy encounters, you must bring sanctification to this matter. Separated. Others can't. I can't. I see the pants ladies wear today. You wear pants and this place is like this. Are you not ashamed? I do morning work. You see women that when they have done morning work, they have sweat to this part. You, you dare not look. Because the entire mark will be out. These are the things that leak out, leaks out the grace of God upon our lives. And this is one of the reasons why the church is no longer potent. You, you, you don't understand this. Sir, the knowledge in our generation, and your Baba Lola didn't touch one, one, one twentieth of it. But what they did, we can't do. I thought that with the knowledge explosion comes power explosion. But no, even the power today, how many young men are demonstrating it? How many of you are demonstrating power? But you demonstrate Hebrew Greek, and you think that that is where power is. When character and values are dying. 
And when somebody comes to accentuate character, you say, don't mind him, he's a Jew. Don't mind him! He, is not, he has not entered into some depths of revelation. Because revelation in the kingdom is progressive. Somebody say progressive. So they withdraw the word progressive. Instead of saying progressive, they say progressive. Because we want to speak mystery. Healthy encounters. You need to, you need to change. Please take your seats. Thank you. You need to change. Wear your cap in style. See my hair cut now. Does it mean I'm a Jew? I started doing this deliberately. Jericho your hair. Let it look clean. Keep the beards. Let it look clean. Don't look like an arm robber. When we look at you, we say, hey, I hope he's not a fake prophet. Healthy encounters. So we have finished this part. You don't accentuate lust and you are not prone to lust. lost and you are not prone to lost it means you are held you don't you don't promote it you are not party to it Say, ah, God doesn't look at the mind, or he doesn't look at the body, or he doesn't look at the is the is the heart that he looks. It's the mind that he looks. So, so you can you can sell all your all your body for us to see because it's the heart that God looks at. And when the pastor for you'll be the first person to cast the stones. And it, hey, with all this anointing, why with Why did you why did you why did you sell that thing to him? My body is your sanctuary. That's a song by a man. He said, My body is your sanctuary. So I might be bold to say my body. It's your sanctuary. Many years ago, I was praying one day, and the Lord said to me, Son, take care of your body. He said, The body is a suit that I need to give expression to my purposes for your life. If the body is dead, my purposes will suffer. You need all the time. Take care of your body. I had girlfriends those days who were blessed. I had to start teaching them how to package their body. Ladies around me. It was when I was going to get married, I cut off from, I dissociated myself from ladies. I said, okay, I'm about to be married now. And that was not because I was playing around them, but just because I really needed to give my wife that security. I called them one after the other. Hey, sorry, you know, um, we can't be that close anymore. I'm so sorry. But I'm, I'm just a call away. Not all the time, but when there are critical things. There are some of them, as my friends, they were well endowed on their chest. And no matter the bra they wear, and I lie, I had to tell them, I said, this is what you need to do now. Because we're friends. And that died. That case was. I said, oh, Spears, how do you know these things? I said, How won't I know? That's why some of us went through what we went through.
You know, it was in RCM, we were doing hot service, bridging the gap. Bridging the gap. Bridging generational gap or bridging the gap. And Pastor Isiri was preaching and crying. He said, Jesus, help me. And he was crying. In that same meeting, there is a brother in choir that was seen another sister in choir. What he was seeing was in your and breast. And he told the lady, he said, you know there is something I like about you. And the lady said, hey, tell me. He said, I like your breast. Inside meeting where the preacher, they cry. The preacher was saying, the preacher was saying, Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. That's the only, I will never forget that video. I saw the video recently and I remembered how he was saying, Jesus, help me. And another, the same choir members, oh, two choir members. This one is singing on the altar and the, the other guy was not in choir. He was in the congregation. But what he was seeing is her breast. There is something I like about you. Now imagine that lady didn't take it up with the pastors. And she said, hey, tell me more. Thank God she was disciplined. It was in one meeting here, one April meeting, that one stupid thief that wants to come and steal waters from where he has not labored. When we called his, call him to order, he said to pastor, one of our pastors, he said, what, why should pastors involve themselves in the matter of two adults? Pastor Victor said, did you say you are a minister in your church? Or did you say that you are, you are under a pastor? It means you are not trained. So I'm talking to you about healthy encounters. First, has God encountered you and encountered how you dress? Has God, has God encountered how you do makeup? These days, I don't even know I don't know what I don't this you guys have taken makeup to another level. Ah I did fear una now. Women pie. I don't know if it's 10 powders you wear on your face. You know now you can hardly hug a sister, right? You 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 can hardly. Is it that there is a lip gloss or there is powder? So the moment I see it, I say, all right, take note of this place. The moment I get home, I say, if you see you, now hug. <laughs> I just take note of it. Say, babe, see, see, see it's, it's somebody's hug. It wasn't, it's not any stealing by waters. It's just one of our sisters. If I know the name I mentioned, then so now this sister hug me or I beg foundations since you know my, let me even use this to bring deliverance to myself since you know your foundations are very heavy stop hugging me like that just let's wave the day you are you keep natural face no problem because you are also causing damage to my shirts pastor glory when we're growing you know one of the things my mom taught my sisters my mom taught my sisters that their knee is pride. That men should not see their kneecap. That was how my mom taught my younger ones. So till today, anything blessing wears, anything, it must go below this. Till today. That woman didn't go to school. We were told that your kneecap, your kneecap as a lady, not, not front, oh, kneecap, Your kneecap, <laughs> but today you have what we call bomb shot on the island. Here you see married women with short kneecap like this. We ring, we wedding ring, and the foolish man is following her behind. <laughs> because he has a mumu button. And then tomorrow, this lady will now call you. Hello, Reverend Austin. Can I talk to you? With a Queen's English voice. You would think it's something good. This cannot talk to you. Say, okay, ma'am, you can talk. 
Oh, Reverend Austin, English don't change. I don't know why I'm going through this right now. I'm going through trouble. Every hell is broken on my marriage. And he said, okay, I'll give you an appointment. The day you see her coming, you say, oh, no wonder. You are part of the problem. You are part of the problem. You have not been sanctified. You have not been separated. You have colored this guy's mind and now he has seen people that can color it more than you. Healthy Encounters Part 1 Sanctify the Lord in your body. Don't be one that projects lust and don't be captured with lust. So you reject it. And the way to reject lust is not by looking at the lady and saying, I'm buying Satan, I'm buying devil. No. What the Bible recommends is you flee, you run. So when you come to an environment and every time you come, there's a promotion. There's a promotion. There's a promotion. You see, in RCN, there's this unconscious thing that I told my, my people to do. I say, I beg, before you allow people to sit in the front, look at what they are wearing. It's not because we need, if you are wearing palm slippers and you are well dressed, so be it. If video captures you, that's what you have. But you cannot wear something that when I say, hey, you do like this, and the next thing is your skirt is open and I'm seeing your underpants. No, you can't be at the front. It's trouble. I want you to know that every spiritual man is first a man. Every spiritual man is first what? A man. And a man at his very best is still a man. For these priests are chosen from amongst you. They are first you among you men before they were called. So this one that you kill pastors and kill ministers or kill people who are anointed. Don't do that. So healthy encounters must begin by your sanctification. Are you healthy? The way you dress. Did you get something? Are you healthy the way you dress? When you wear a t-shirt, wear it gorgeously. If it's four button, cover three. Don't cover two. You see sisters, do one button, two. This entire one will be left. I know some of you are trying to look at your t-shirts now. Don't worry, I've, I've sampled all of you are looking good. If not, I would have used one as guinea pig tonight. Say you stand up. Can you see what I'm talking about? Is that okay? So, you, you don't project lust. And you don't also want people to project lust to you. But, we are in a generation where they project these things. So what do we do? Are you with me? Aha. Uh -huh. So what do we do? Should I tell you the practical thing to do? There is a lady that did... Uh... No, let me not touch her so that because I'm in Lagos with her. So let me not touch. I wanted to talk about Kukaton. I wanted to. What touched me most in that season was how pastors were claiming her. That was, that was what finished me. That was what buried me. And I'm like, man, we are dead. We are in trouble in church. If that priestess was my member, before the finishing of that program, she would change her dressing. I will send a message. Are we doing cooking or we are doing lusting?
the church has become too sensual. Too sensual. Too sensual. That's why there's no power anymore. You can count the number of young people who carry power. Who carry genuine power. You can count them. You can isolate them. Because purity now Purity is going extinct. We can quote Hebrew Greek. We can say, Thus says the Lord. Two, three, four, five people fall in church. And we say that is power. Do you know what power is? Do you want to know what power is? Power is when you hear the stories of people like Paul Ade Farasi who were hooked on drugs and when they speak now there is a departure of 190 degree you cannot trace their life to that anymore power is when you hear people like Duncan Williams speak and they tell you how they put their hands to burn it down because they were on the edge of drugs and nobody could transform him until they told him there is a man go to Benin city when you meet with this man drugs will dry you know what power is? power is when you hear people like I already Jaffa passing through on that bridge in Lagos and says I remember once upon a time we killed here that is power how Jesus' power transforms deadly men to become men of noble. That is power. Power is not the display of knowledge. Power is when God takes a dead man and kills him again. That you are dead in sin, but come, let me give you a better death. You see power? It's power that brings a prostitute here. We never call her out and say you are a prostitute. But in one week she says I'm not prostituting again. And you say to her, what happened? He said, I've heard the gospel. I've heard the gospel of power and the power of the gospel has encountered me. And I said, so now what next? I don't want to prostitute again. If I suffer, I suffer. We are not, we are not preaching to tell her, stop and we will train you. But she's already choosing the pathway of suffering because she knows that if she desires for Jesus, at some point she will suffer. Hell the encounters. Our convictions are fickle. Our approach shows that we are too sensual. And everything, everything is going south. From the pulpit to the pew. Line out seven ministers, you will see five defiled. Three sleeping with peers. Two playing away match. Travel. Until one day, the same person they went to play away matches watching on Facebook, he said, Ah, uh -uh, so this man is a man of God. And then she calls. I say, Oh boy, <laughs> if you don't settle me, you'll be in trouble. I will bring scandal on you. Another file of ch spending church money has opened. This month, we give you two million. Don't talk. When she's broke, six months later, she calls again. Remember, if you don't do anything, scandal. And this reckless demon that is in the body of Christ, reckless demon that says, you know, I'm talking healthy encounters. Oh. He say, you know, if you confess your sin, the body of Christ will be in trouble. Ah! Let us abort this child. And let's just keep it between. Because if you, if you, if you, if you dare mention this thing, it will rattle the body of Christ. Excuse me. There is nothing in this age that can rattle the body of Christ. If there was anything that should rattle the body of Christ, was Saul who became Paul. 
who was going around annihilating the body, the people, the members, the arrowheads, taking them out. If there is anything that should have rattled the body of Christ, should be Herod. When he killed one of the apostles, and yet the church didn't die. So it's not your fornication that can kill us. Confess now, so that that seed can die. Are you with me? Hell the encounters. Confession. Confess now, so that that seed can die. Because sin thrives in secrecy. I've told you that several times. One of the reasons why no woman on earth can appear tomorrow and say, I slept with Austin, I want to bring, I want to bring scandal to him. Before you spoke, I've spoken 10 times. For 10, 20 years straight, I've spoken about my past. Some places I mentioned their names. I didn't even know a generation will come that we want to enhance scandal. So when they come, just ask them, what is your name? Say, oh, Reverend Austin has mentioned this thing before. You see, you are laughing. When I was going to marry my wife, one of them pulled my wife out. With the mind to destroy that marriage. I took my wife home to show my parents. We were in church and they pulled her out. Say, um, um. And then my wife said, what is your name? She spoke there. My wife said, oh, you are the one that, um. Abba Jaboni. He told you. I'm an open check. I'm an open check. I am an open check because I know any sin that I keep will have effect on me. Healthy encounters. Number two, confession. You know number one is what? Number one is what? Separation. Sanctification. Number two is confession. Number two is confession. Number two is confession. What are you hearing? What are you professing? What are you hearing? What are you professing? You know, I'm clearing the water so that when impartation comes this time, it will land on a good ground. Give me next verse. Let me read through. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am what? A child. He's saying he doesn't have the capacity to come into what God has called him to be. Confession. He doesn't have the capacity to come into what the Lord has called him to be next but the lord said unto me say not i'm a child for thou shalt go to all that i shall send thee and whatever i command thee thou shalt speak so your confession are not the offshoot of your experiences your confession are the offshoot of the sayings and the speakings of god are you with me number two what confession the things you say they are not the pro the things you profess are not an offshoot of your personal experience so one of the ways to know that you are a healthy person in the spirit is the source of information where you get the information where you get the things you confess am i communicating with you healthy encounters one key area is your confession the source of those conf co confession the source of the place the the, 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 the the words that you receive the things that you share because as you become prophetic as you as you gradually tilt into operating in your prophetic frame then you will have to do a lot of speaking pastor i said to us one of the bedrock of the of the prophetic people is what prophesying are you getting it now it's prophesying that is speakings and the speakings now the way for us to now begin to operate with the speakings is who is speaking to you who are you hearing? I have done this study for over five years. I've been saying to, I will teach this thing, healthy encounter. I will teach this thing on healthy encounters. I will teach it. This is the first time. If you want to be a prophetic person, where you are beaming from, the place where you are receiving those instructions from matters. So, 
um, this is this is this is where I I, I I I see a lot of people who fast, and when they fast, Pastor Mike, they fast long, and by the time they are coming out, you can tell that something is wrong somewhere. That these guys have stumbled into the second heavens. They they are operating from the heavens, but the heavens that they are operating from is not God. Give me Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. One, two, can we read? Somebody say, go back, go back, go back, go back. Somebody say, there are heavenly places. Our destination is not heavenly places. Our destination is heavenly places in Christ. So, you will see that there are people who are confessing from the second heavens. Michael Jackson confessed from second heavens. Superstars confessed from second heavens. They, they received Bob Marley. Some of them like that. Second heavens. I don't want to mention names, Nigerian names. R. Kelly. City of justice. City of peace. <laughs> of course. But you see, at some point he sang some songs that we sang in the church. I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. You know? You know, I told you earlier that the mind is strong. I see how those Kenny G. I see, I see I've got them. Boys to men. On bended knees. Right? Michael Bolton. So you, that gives you an entrance into the kind of songs I listen to. Bob Marley. Are you with me? They were beaming from the second heavens. But there are songs, somebody will say, Hold of an Austin. But there are songs that are freedom, um, freedom fighter songs. They are soul and jazz. There is soul. They are inspirational. Yes! <laughs> Let's check these things very well. Always, 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 always probe the source. You know how, how powerful music is? I stopped going to the barber shop. I had to create a place in my house where they come to bab me. Because every song that is out, the reason why I know about the song is not because, it's not because I follow it. I bet you. It's not because I watch online. It's because I've gone to the barber shop. And I sat down. And I'm waiting for my turn. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, 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 hey. And when I leave, I'll just be hearing Dikere, 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 Hey, 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 oh, Dikere. How many of you know that? That? Even me, oh, even me, oh, Jordan, oh. You know, I don't even know the word is, but the beat. The beat will now be my head. I remember when I was going to serve. That was when they were singing this song. Kongaso. Nice. It was when they were cutting my hair as I was waiting that that one entered into my mind. Sometimes you will be praying, you will be hearing Kongaso, Kongaso. You will be like, where did I get this Bluetooth from? You see, you see, you guys, I'm not, you are fake. That is why you are dying. That is why you are dying. At times I'll tell my wife, I'll say, Ebi, where did this song come from? This thing, they trouble my mind. The moment I see it, she dies. But you, you will not cry out. Satan will now use it the day you are leading praise worship. You've taken the people high. You just say, Konga, sir. Everybody will come back. <laughs> what did you just say? Excuse me. 
this thing happened to one one person recently i saw it on on social media you think i'm joking the person went high she's a lady oh she went high when she took the people there they, oh god oh god oh. she just released one phrase that is secular everybody say huh? this is not comedy it's real it's on social media now sauce healthy encounter dressing healthy encounter confession pastor mike confession how do people live today our words are you healthy you know as i'm talking you already can see your state you can you, you can tell that oh my god this thing called prophetic tutorial is serious am i really okay Chidima, do you know why i don't listen to fm because of issues like this you know why i gave up things i cannot regulate i give them up yes, sir. the things i can't regulate that if i if i want to watch a movie now I know this is the movie I want to watch, so I'm the one using my hand to watch it. So if there is loss, I know I'm part of my problem. Not that I will just be there and they will attack me with one thing. And then the devil will be saying, click, don't click, click, don't click, click, don't click, click, don't click. Your hand will be going like this. Don't go, don't go. Until there's an overpowering conversation, you say, wait till let me even try. Param. A pastor was invited in England. A man of God. And when he went, those were the days where internet was very expensive, very scarce. So they gave him exclusive internet. Somebody said exclusive. The church said they should pay. It's, uh, my spiritual father was the one that told us this story. And the man would go and teach and come back and leave. When he left, they gave the church bills of thousands of pounds. Ah! Uh -uh. <laughs> Why? Why are you giving us his will? So you ask us to give the man a secured internet for him. Because those days when you are invited as a man of God and they give you Wi-Fi, you are, that church honored you. As in they give you Wi-Fi in honor because it wasn't common. It was a few because it's expensive. If you now use that thing to do some kind of things, the prices will triple. On this occasion, the pastor was using it to watch porn. He will watch porn in the evening, morning till night, and then he will come and preach. So when he left, wait now, I've not finished. Your, you know I'm talking confession. Because the atmosphere, you, you know, <laughs> impartation is about what? Atmosphere. You remember? I'm tying everything together. Now, from what we started since yesterday. Right? So when he left, they went and said, give us the shot engine, let us see. Porn, porn, porn. On. and for you to watch porn those days you pay premium price it's expensive deadly and expensive the life of that, ch that church has not remained the same till date it was the moment they opened that meanwhile before they brought that pastor the Lord told them not to bring him there were prophecies when they were praying but you know why they were bringing him he is the in thing he was a lead, he was a, he's part of the leading you know in nigeria now there are four leading voices if you want to invite people for conferences if they are not there your conference is not complete by human estimation it means you have not arrived two younger generation two middle class and two i just see them in twos like that there are two apostles there are two other junior apostles and now there are two upcoming apostles i'm already seeing them two of them two two like that so on this occasion, this one was part of the new generation theme. That if you are doing conference, if you don't bring him, it means you have not arrived. When the man left, lost invaded the church. Sexual perversity invaded the church. But glory to God, they already knew. They knew earlier. 
that God said they shouldn't bring him. Then when they brought him, they now discovered his escapade. And yet nothing was done about it so it invaded and ravaged the church. Young men were given to licentious life. In Nigeria, once upon a time that the Kumu you opened this platform to a man of God, I will not mention his name. You know, it's better you know history. Because if you are armed with history, you will trust God not to repeat the same mistake. Do you know how many years it took us to invite one person to our senior? It was because of the things I know that I will not open our platform to just anybody. For me, it's a privilege for you to come on our platform. That's how I see it. I honor grace on you, but to stand behind this thing that God has trusted me with, I will not do it based on friendship. I will not do it because I love you and we are friends and I will say, let us be sharing pulpit. Never! I will probe and probe and probe. I almost, I almost died last year when I opened the platform up to somebody only to discover that he had sexual sin before he came. Ask my wife, she will tell you how I stood before God and repented. And I said, God help me, this will never happen again. And my wife asked me that day, this person you want to give this platform to, AJ, I say, he's our son. He's a son of this house. Confession. Source. Where you are beaming from. Healthy encounters. We have not touched. We are. We have not. We are just. We've just touched one strong matter now. So what do you do when a man of lust en encounter you? You should know. Amen. Ah, before this prayer started, I was not like this. How did this thing come? Ah, he blessed said, Now nah, that place where I go. Hey, a young man was going to a conference with his fiance when he got there. My spiritual son, actually. When he got there, he slept with the girl and impregnated her. I said, Where were you going? He said, Conference. Hmm. I said, Conference. He said, Yes. I said, Okay. Sorry, man. I better come and put in this. I'm distracted. I say, where were you going? He said, conference. He mentioned the conference. I say, which country? He mentioned it. Who was the minister there? I say, okay, it's okay, it's okay. There's no problem, it's okay. What happened to you was that you received Bluetooth. This man's case, I know it, but I will not tell him because he's a minister of the gospel, so I will not, I will not, uh, what's the word? I will not naked him. Huh? I will not derope him. I already knew the young man was going to a conference to seek the face of God, but the spirit that was on that man is heavier than that conference. So that was you, you see, whether as I'm speaking now, if I live in adultery, part of it will be coming out. Are you with me? Are you with me? That is why it's treacherous to follow people you don't know. And this generation, they are quick to say, The Lord is releasing me to leave this place. You've been here for 20 years. <laughs> a new apostle just came now that is raining. You want to follow him. You stand up, you go there. Is somebody getting me today? Am I against the church? No. But the church is polarized. And he now came to me in Nigeria and said, I want to go and marry. I said, sit down, tell me the truth. What's going on? You can't just appear and tell me you want to go and marry now and marry and finish it. What's going on? Sit down. Tell me the truth. I said, Papa, she's pregnant. I said, so who is aware? He said, nobody. Why will you say nobody? I thought you said she's pregnant. Is she not aware? <laughs> I said, so you plan to cover this sin? Ah, bro, pick this sin now. Shame the devil and you hold the shame. I said, you see what is going on now? You, will, you want to give me paper? You will still commit this sin if it's in 10 years' time. And this lady will lose you. 
I said, so let us face it now. Call the girl for me. I called her. I said, have you told your mom? She said, no. Have you told your dad? She said, no. But you people want to marry and your parents are happy that you want to marry. She said, yes. I said, it doesn't work like that. This boy is my son. And the Bible says, he who covers his sin will not prosper. This marriage will not prosper on that deceit. Deceit one. Deceit two, you want to marry again. Hi! Maybe God can shut your womb because of this matter. I said, confess it. Quickly! I called the pastor in, in London. I said, are you aware of this is going on? He said, yes. I said, are you aware the guys in Nigeria? He said, no. Are you aware they want to marry? He said, no. I said, ah. The boy is here on my, in my room. I put the phone on speaker. Talk to him. I finished. I said, have you told your uncles here in Lagos? He said, no. But you are going to introduce yourself before the man. He said, yes, we have concluded. I said, go back and tell your uncle that she's pregnant. Tell your mother that she's pregnant. I gave the girl 24 hours to get back to me or I will call her mom myself and tell her she's pregnant. You don't keep seeing. You don't avoid it. The pastor in England called me and said, Reverend Austin, thank you. The mom was so happy. You know what? And I said to him, I said, for the sin that you have committed, your wedding is marriage blessing, not wedding. Your girl will not wear a veil because there's consequence for this decision. And I called the pastor in England. I said, I know that you guys are liberals, but this one is my picking. I know he's under you. Wed him. Bless the marriage. Don't let her wear veil because... What he la? And that was how we did the marriage blessing. The father was aware, the mom was aware, and I said, shift the date for the wedding. Let them think properly. A few days ago, he sent me a message thanking me. You see, no guilt anymore. Before the parents, no guilt. No, even if there was disappointment, or oh, this is how we eventually, this is how our daughter married. Now, if the belly is coming out, they are rejoicing because everything was done properly. How do you handle it? For the glory that was set before him, he what? Despised the shame. He endured the cross. That's how Christians behave. This is this is gospel. This is not this is not bread and butter Christianity that I'm talking to you about today. You despise shame for the sake of the glory that is ahead. You despise some certain shame shames of i don't have house rent is now my friend that i need to call despise it if god say call shame hey how many of you here have been despised and you eventually met with the people how sweet is that story very sweet my wa very sweet there are people who this Hi, my mother's younger sister. When we're going to bury my mom, when my mother died, do you know what she said? I've been hiding for years. I didn't want anybody to know what I was doing in Lagos. Not even my brothers know how the Lord has blessed me. Now, not with money, but with people. Me, I'm blessed. I have people. But none of them knew. So when my mother died, my mom's sister came for the burial. Guess what? You know the motive? Uh -huh. Their backbone is dead. I'm coming to see how they will bury her. And she told people in the village. And they were telling us, my brothers were angry. I said, all of you, boom, don't say a word. She sent us money. I told them, tell her we don't need it. They sent us cow. I said, tell them we don't need it. Where she will sit in Delta State, what she needs, the tent and the food and everything paid for. Just come. We spent 17, 16.8 million for that barrier. I didn't allow any of my siblings drop a dime. I told them, all of you, come down from the great grandchildren to the children to the children of my mom that she turned against my mother all of them everybody was like yes let us see he despised the shame because of the glory that is ahead despise the shame my mom will be looking from heaven and she will be saying is she or call me is she because they were thinking that we will suffer but when she came her jaw dropped you know why 
we endured the shame there was glory ahead that is how the believers don't live in sin expose yourself to the shame now and enjoy it despise it i beg your pardon and then endure the cross you know the cross formation that is process you will go through process what you you know what the cross does the cross is the great divide between life and what death you will go through process so that god will prune you to become a finer person and i said son despise this thing i will not leave you because you slept with her i will throw you away i will be with you through the face and thing through this i will stand with you i went to preach in a church for a pastor when i left there he called me and said he doesn't want his wife anymore he wants divorce i said over my dead body not in my lifetime i just left your church and you want to divorce your wife not me but before i left there i spoke in parables to him because i had seen that he was in a corrupt priesthood i seen that he was in a corrupt fountain listen to me well and listen to me clearly i knew that something was brewing so i weaved all my messages in parable you know i spoke to you about handling i'm tying that against spiritual health i'm tying it now and i spoke to him in parables because i have seen the chains of divorce from the top of the leadership so i knew it was coming after him and he seemed to be the only guy that is clean on that matter when they call for divorce it was the church that brought the church printer to print out the documents the church never called for once how do we say to you people rather they called the lady and said this marriage the guy's mind is made up and I told her you know what I have a spiritual machine in my house I may not have all the time for you but my wife does you know you know you I think you were part of the people praying for the person one of my friend's wife in one of the African countries don't me not mention it and you guys were interceding made the Lord expose you to men that will stand with you Amen. confession and I said to him bro so I left him we stood with him prayed with him until he came back to his senses the moment the guy said he doesn't want divorce again the church turned against him As I talk to you now, he's on his way out of the church. This is what we have become. If you are not like me, then step out of my boat. I want you to be like me so that I will have a tap on you. Spiritual health. spiritual health are you healthy when next i come we'll continue in fact the next thing will be spiritual health if the lord permits looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured what the cross despising what and his what set down at the right hand of the father there are there are shameful things that you would despise for the sake of the kingdom that's where confession comes if i confess this thing they would despise me it's but for a season one day i called one of my pastor I said, I know that you have been healed. But for that healing to be cemented and for me to be sure that tomorrow you will not repeat this mistake, I'm looking forward to the day you will talk about it in the public. You will use your mouth to say it. And after two years, he stood one day and he spoke about it. And he said, the person I'm talking about is me. No member knew that my pastor went into adultery. Not, not everybody. It was among the leadership. Even the leadership. I think it was within the pastors, not HODs. That 
that is what it means to stand and to despise shame in recent time I suspended one of our pastors for about four months no other pastor was aware only me and the resident pastor and my wife all of you were not I'm sure you are shocked no other pastor in RCM was aware because it was not a case that needed too many imputes the time I offended my wife I called Papa I said you see today I cannot preach I have done something not beat my wife not do anything but my utterances my utterances were harsh and hard and I knew I shouldn't preach I called my spiritual father I said Papa today please I want to be excused I won't be able to teach I'm not in a good frame you know why I stopped? Two reasons. Number one, if I speak that day, I will spew my bitterness on you. I will speak that, I will open that vault to your life. Some of you will go home, that's the first time you will not know why you slapped your wife. You will go home, you will not know why you shout, you are shouting on this woman that you have not shouted on like this. You have spoken but you have not shouted like this. It's because somebody will now tell you that, where is it written in the Bible? Where this thing that uh, you know, you know, this new generation. I look at you guys, I smile cheapishly. He says, Such as I have, give I you. Now, waiting, I get no, be, no, be saying, Now, waiting, I get now, I will give now, waiting, I get, I they give you so. It's what I have that I'm giving you. If you stay close to a praying person, before you know it, you start praying. Before you know it, you, you will pick his mannerism. Apostle Aramon, when you are with him, you will just hear him do, hmm. Lord, show me mercy. I do that. It wasn't part of my wiring. It's a mannerism I got from my father. Because we travel together a lot. You can just be driving, you just hear him say, Lord, show me mercy. And then he begins to speak in tongue. That aspect of speaking in tongue, I've been like that also. But the mannerism I picked from him is that. Or, you'll see him do like this. I also picked it from him. There is what we call transference of spirit. Like it, believe it or not, it's up to you. spiritual health pointers to show if you are healthy if lust is doing you you know you need to admit yourself if you are prone to making people lost you know you need to admit yourself you are prone to dressing some certain kind of ways just because you want comfort you know you need to admit yourself if your confession and source of confession is one kind you know you need to admit yourself. The source of where you are beaming from, is it from the second heavens or the third heavens? You know you need to admit yourself. The kind of tongues you speak. I met with a lady recently, last year. She's been sleeping with a top minister in Lagos since she was a teenager. And she now became an adult. And when she speaks in tongues, the walls talk to her. When she speaks in tongues, Vicky, she hears voices talking to her. And I know that that man is fake. The moment she told me that thing, and the man is looking for her, she had to go into hiding. And the reason why she suddenly became angry was because she found out that the man was also sleeping with her friend. is a solid is a is a major prophet in lagos so let me say this before i say this so sometimes when you see us preach the way we preach it's because there are things we know that you don't know there are things we know that you don't know
when you hear an apostle Arame talking close to like is, is this hate is this jealousy no there was one in Lagos that I, I told Papa I said give me permission let me go and beat this man in the night I said Papa I will beat him spoil his face in the morning he cannot tell anybody that is me because nobody will believe I will go to his house the girl will be standing by I will say do you know her before he say boom boom I will head put him first pow I would have finished and say enter moto let's go he cannot say it's Reverend Austin that did this in the morning because he knows why I did it apostles say we don't fight in the flesh the arm of flesh will fail you I say let's just beat him small beat him small defiling young ladies is it the case of homosexuality is here among our ministers among us in the body of Christ here in, by meaning by here I mean is in Nigeria in fact is is it's just a time bomb waiting for announcement when they say now it has been legalized in Nigeria, you will see how many Pentecostal pastors will come out. In Christ alone. And the reason why they will come out is because they want asylum. They want to declare so that the moment they declare, they can take them out of Nigeria. Somebody say healthy encounters. I hope now you will be careful the, the people you pursue this one that they say it is the reigning pastor you go there when we begin to talk you say hey what are you saying what are you saying he's a good man of God can't you see the trailers of rice that they are distributing <laughs> oh my God Almighty, I don't want to be in this kind of message you know it's been a long time I, that's why anytime we take prophetic classes you must shake tables some you will shake and some you will break it and throw it away where they can't pick it again so it's philanthropy pastor mike the reason why you are talking like this is because you cannot buy trailers of rice but do you know the accurate philanthropy you, you know the accurate philanthropy The accurate philanthropy will do it and say, Tell no one. May God give you understanding. But your own, when you are doing, say, Cameraman, follow me. Because you want buzz. We are going to the orphanage in December. I caught Raya, I caught warning for her. I said, I don't want to see any video from that orphanage. I draw here. I don't want to see any, not one single video. Go there, give to them what you need to give to them and get out. Let not your right hand know what your left is doing. That's what the Bible said. Oh, you want to give trailer of rice, you see. Hey now. You want, or do you want to put bundle of money that will go over your head? They will not hold it. And they will snap. Weep sentiment around weak, non discerning Christians. I will not be saying, Oh, this man is a good man. Say whatever you want to say about him. He's a good man. God didn't say we should be good men, He said we should be righteous men. It's righteousness that God has promised you. Did you get something tonight? So let me let me begin to wind you up for impartation now. Let me let me begin to bring you to the water of impartation. The last one that I will share with you tonight. So what what did we touch this night? Source. Under source, I said there are places, heavenly places, where you source for these things. And the people that you follow okay the people that you follow let me give you one more
I would have touched the voice, I would have touched, but let me leave the voice and let me talk the experience, spiritual experiences. Spiritual experiences. There are three sponsors of experiences. Self, Satan, God. You would also notice that the first man was open to a vast spiritual ecosystem. And in that spiritual ecosystem, God was in there. In the garden, there were four different trees. Who can itemize them? Who can itemize them for me? I'll give you a diary. The, no, raise your hand. Oh yeah, four trees. Give him the mic. No, 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 no. That is, you are correct, but say it the way it is in the Bible. Okay, okay you are correct. So, um, tree of life, good and evil, for food. Hmm? No. You didn't put comma or food stuff, you just say talk, they go. Uh huh. Say it well so that people can get it. People can write. Okay. There are four trees, alright? The trees for beauty. Beauty. Uh huh. That's the first one. Uh huh. Three of. So the trees for beauty. That's where the beauty for flower comes in. When it's not a sin, all right. If your boyfriend who is dating you, Christian relationship, comes and he gives you flower, receive it. <laughs> Marcel, <laughs> give her flowers, okay? So flowers. When you look at those flowers, you are in love. You just you're cool. Pastor Mike, give her flowers. Well, she don't want flowers. Okay. Well, I I think I think I think in this aspect I've mo uh, no wait in this in this aspect I've modeled some example. I've been a model in this. Have I been a model to you in these matters? I'm a model to you in these matters. I mean, I celebrate my wife. And I don't compel celebration from you guys, but I do it for my wife. She is mine. Okay, the Bible says, He who finds a good wife, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. So my wife's pet name is Good Wife. Even the pet name is from the Bible. I told you I think from scripture. I will not go and say, Darling. Amen. So the tree of knowledge. Tree of good and evil. Yes, no, he has gotten it. Uh-huh. Knowledge of good and evil. Uh-huh. Beauty mm -hmm. for food. For food. And life. For the tree of life. The tree of life. So he got it. So I'll give you a diary. I have two new diaries in the car. I'll give you one. The only thing is that my name is on it, okay? Reverend Austin. It's customized. Somebody gave me so and I don't use diaries anymore. So I came with two. Who else needs diary? <sighs> I'll give it to you. Is that okay? Don't worry, when I get more, I get diaries every year. So, I mean, I should get about 20. I'll give to you. They gave me some on the, in Makodi. I gave, the moment I collected the person turn, I called people and I distributed it. Very lovely diaries. The person would have heard me. I don't have secrets. Praise the Lord. So, um, 
That's why my wife is afraid of this. She said, you know, if I offend you, I will hear it in the public. I say, yes, you hear it because me, when I offend you, I, so, I still say it in the public that uh, I spoke to my wife harshly. Praise the Lord. So, experiences are sponsored either by self, motivated by self because you want to prove a point, you are not healthy. It means that your prophetic journey, you, Christ has not become your security yet. Did you get that? And if Christ has not become your security yet, to be carnally minded is what? You are sponsoring death and pollution into that fountain of your prophetic journey. So we are talking about being healthy the experience you must be very careful when you notice that you are so anointed but there are no restrictions in your life you know what the bible said and joseph went eh, Samson went and took. What's the name of that lady he took? He went to Timnat. It was the lady in Timnat. And took her. That is a man that has spiritual experiences without control. What was powering the anointing was self. Everybody knows he's anointed. That was not Satan. And Samson went down to Timnath and saw a woman in, in what? A woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. Next. Next, sir. And he came up and told his father and his mother and said, I have seen a woman in Timnath of what? The daughters of the Philistines. Now, therefore, get her for me to wife. Then, no, no, no. There's a place where the Bible says he took her. Huh? It's an opening verse. Help me search for it. Because there is no control. Alright? So, you, you, you see that when you come to experience, it is either self, Satan, or God. So, it's very important that you now begin to trace the source again of this your what experiences what is promoting this experience is it the second heaven that is promoting this experience so you begin to speak in tongues and you know that man this this tongue is like it sounds like the tongue of devils defilement has entered my quarter defilement has entered this thing this is no longer this is not me and the good thing about these issues I'm raising is you will always know when the switch happened it's because you are not paying attention so the moment you pay attention you will realize experiences colors spiritual things spiritual explanation the way you pick things, the voice that you hear, how these voices come to you. How you, do, how many of you journal your spiritual experience? You journal your spiritual experiences. You, you journal it and if you look at it, you can say that, okay. And so when your voice is talking to you, it's not bad. It simply means that you need to come to the place where you differentiate the voice of God from your voice speaking. The deadliest of it is when your voice becomes self, that everything must be arrogated by. In the prophetic, it's deadly to be a selfish person. In fact, if you are selfish, you cannot appropriate prophetic grace. And then, 
when you are a lover of spiritual experiences it is easier to be ensnared I love when I pray and I say father in the name of Jesus Christ I am here please Pastor Mike I can tell you how many times I have prayed for God to anoint me in my sojourn with him I can count it it's not part of the things I, I run for many years ago I discovered that what carries what gives you power is alignment when you align when you are pure when you are broken when you are sincere if you know those things there is a part that I knew just recently when you are persecuted persecution gives authority when 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 persecutions are coming and you check that this one is not because of sin ah it means something is coming on. so that is when you begin to pray prayers like oh lord help me not to die in the midst of process Help me not to die in the midst of process because you know that God is the one. This one now is because God wants to bring something. Are you with me? There are experiences that are carved out for your life, but no, you don't want to go through that. You want to go through the ones I have. When I when I come to you and I speak to you about how how the Lord came and fed me in, the, in my dreams. Because for me, when I fast long, the Holy Ghost feeds me. I have encounters where I eat in the spirit. And I know this eating, you know, Pastor Ayo said it earlier, right? I know that this eating is not witchcraft. I know that it is rise up, eat, for the journey is what? It's far. So encounters don't no, pursue them but don't make them the front burner of your walk with God walk with God he will open you up to experiences that are suitable for your life there are have you heard things like some of you are asking for what will kill you or there are powers you ask for and if it comes to you because you don't have the capacity and you insist and the Lord releases it it now destroys you. Or you are pursuing encounters. You pursue encounters to the extent that an angel of darkness inflames himself into the angel of light. And they begin to talk to you. Then you write it and you send it to us. That the Holy Spirit says we must do this thing. And by the time we read what you are saying, we, when we marry it with the scriptures, we will see gaps in it. There is a word I use when I speak to people in RCM. I said he has he has collided. Once I tell the pastors, I like, say this guy don't collide. He has. So when I see people who fast long and I begin to see the way they talk, there's no cohesion in their speech with the Bible. I say come out of that fast. Stop fasting for now. Because from the beginning it will look healthy. Then when they be, when you begin to interface with spirits, one of our members went to fast very long, and one day he called me and said, "Pastor, I want you to join faith with me and pray with me." Hear this. And I said, "What's the prayer?" He said, "Every time I start this my long fast, I encounter this, some spirit and they pursue me out." So I want you to pray with me because I'm afraid of them. The moment he said that, I can't pray. Because I know that when we fast, we gain power over demons. And Bible says, perfect love cast out all fear. I should not be afraid of demons in the midst of my fasting. So I told him, you know what? Stop the fast. I knew that that fasting was already opening him up to a strange realm. So I said to him, Pastor Mike, I said what? Stop the fast. You know he refused. 
he went mad. He went mad. Those were part of the first sets of disciples that came to RCN. So as we go home, how do I engender spiritual health? Be sanctified. How do I engender spiritual health? Make the Bible your friend. Many of you pray, you don't study. Hallelujah. 